Hello everyone. I'm sure you would have seen this question in some of your interview or some of the data science discussions. Why n minus one in sample variance? Okay. And I asked this question a few days back on YouTube and I got some very interesting answers. So this video, I'm going to explain you in four steps without using any industry jargons why n minus one is there in sample variance, okay? We will first of all understand what is the difference between sample and population and how the estimation works in inferential statistics, okay? Then we will see the formula difference. Then we will compute by hand, right? Manual computation. And we see what is going wrong when we compute with n. And then we will understand why n minus one only, why not n minus two, n minus three or n plus one, okay? Let's start guys. First of all, uh, let's say here is the marks of a student in a class. So I'm sure you know this is a normal distribution chart. Okay. And you have a mu and you have a sigma. Very, very simple. You have a standard deviation and you have a mean. Standard deviation is 30, mean is 170. Now I'm telling you, pick two students from this class. How many students? Two students from this class of your choice and estimate variance of marks. Okay, so try to understand this guys. In a class, there can be many students, okay? But I'm telling you, pick two students and try to estimate the variance of the class. I mean, variance of the marks. So you can choose two students from anywhere, right? From this section, randomly I'm saying, obviously you will choose from this section, from this section, from this section, okay? From those two students only, you will try to estimate what is the population variance. So these two students will be called as a sample and this entire class of students will be called as a population. That is the base of something known as inferential statistics, which means we try to estimate the properties of a population from sample, okay? That is sample versus population. Now let's say guys, you took these two students. So I have written everything today just to save some time, okay? 155 and 165 is the marks of the student that you selected randomly. What is the marks? 155 and 165. These two guys you selected, okay? So what is their mean guys? 155 and 165, 160. Now you have two numbers in your hand, mu, which is represented as population mean is 170 that we have seen already here. Mu is 170, population mean, remember. Mu is represented as population mean. Sample mean is represented by X bar. Here, we have two students in the sample. So my sample mean is how much? 160, 155 plus 165 divided by two is 160, okay? This is done. Now we have population mean and sample mean. Let's try to understand how do we estimate the variance. So the formula for actual population variance is this. Remember here I'm using N. Pay attention here guys, this is very, very important slide. Actual population variance is, you will take all the observation, divide it, uh, subtract it from the mean, and this entire thing you will square, divide by N, number of observations, okay? Now let's use same formula for estimation. We will not keep it N minus one. We will keep it N only, okay? So we will have two different calculation. One using sample mean, other using population mean, okay? Pay attention here, guys. The observation minus sample mean, observation minus sample mean divided by N. What is my N? Two. What is the output I'm getting? 25. Observation minus population mean, observation minus population mean divided by two because I'm using two. I'm not taking n minus one. So 125. Now, one important thing to note here, guys, pay the attention how your mean is deflated, how your mean is reduced. See here, uh, I mean, how your variance is changed. I mean to say not the mean, the variance. See here what you are estimating using sample mean is 25 and what you are using using population mean is 125, okay? Now, one important thing to understand here is when you take two students sample from a class, right? Which mean out of these two means you will have, guys? You will have this mean, right? You will have this mean because this is the sample mean, right? When you are taking two students randomly, which mean you will have? 
you will have this mean sample mean when you are computing using sample mean then your variance is coming 25 which is very very low as compared to when you are comparing from population mean so it is reduced little bit now let's try to understand what happens when you use n minus 1 in place of this so when the correct formula you know to reach to the right mean is given n minus 1 now here i am taking two student sample only if you are taking a, let's say 20 student sample or let's say um, more more number of students as you grow this number more and more what may happen is your population mean will start coming closer to your sample mean try to understand this guys here there is only two two things two sample at the moment you keep increasing the sample let's say this is 100 students right 100 students from this 100 students if i take my in my sample 80 students right then what will happen my population mean and sample mean will start coming closer to each other when that starts happening then these two numbers will start coming closer to each other okay so we are not you know replacing this by n minus 2 or n minus 3 or n minus 4 or n minus 5 that is one reason okay the statisticians have found that if we replace n by n minus 1 in the sample mean formula sample variance formula then we will be able to estimate the variance in a much better way okay now here are two questions why this is n minus 1 only it is n minus 1 only because in statistics when you take the sample and when you try to estimate the population then degrees of freedom play an important role okay now here degrees of freedom will be how much if you are taking let's say five samples two three four five six okay this will have a mean okay let's call that mean as x now you have mean which cannot be changed and you have these five numbers so this mean cannot be changed once you have taken the sample so based on the principle of degrees of freedom and sample statistics we do here n minus one because the degrees of freedom become n minus one so there are two reasons why this n minus one number one as the population sample size grows this will start coming closer to the actual mean so we cannot reduce it by let's say n minus 5 or n minus 10. second is in sample statistics the degrees of freedom is reduced by one because mean is fixed when you take the sample okay and in the end i'm going to tell you the terminology alert and this is called as basis correction so when somebody asks you this question, don't directly say Bayes' correction. Say that when we take the sample statistics and try to estimate the population statistics, then what happens is the mean, uh, the, the 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 you know the estimation gets deflated. To inflate that estimation, we put n minus one. People will ask you why n minus one only. Then I already told you two reasons. So guys, in this video, we understood. From a simple example, how do you compute population statistics from sample statistics and how n minus one plays an important role using this simple, simple formula. OK, please give a thumbs up, guys, if you like this video and please subscribe to Unfold Data Science for more such videos. I'll see you all guys in next video, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.